You know when you have a part that's really important, so you set it down so you don't lose it, and then you lose it almost immediately? That's me right now. Welcome to the shop for a panic build edition of my winter project. Why is this a panic build? Well, it's the middle of March. I woke up and I realized that I haven't done anything to get ready for the flying season. And I'm very excited to get this project going. I just had uh, dinner with a good friend of mine, Jesse. Uh, he's uh, uh, very active with Model Rocketry and he goes by Model Rocket Guy on Facebook. Has supported many of the vendors and the hobby itself. So it was great to have a discussion with him about all things rockets and we got talking to uh, an upscale rocket project that we uh, both kind of want to do. And that is the Estes Ninja. Kit number 0882. Now this is not an original Ninja. This one's actually an upscale uh, using BT-60 body tube that I made several years ago. Hard to get the original Ninjas anymore uh, because they were made from 1987 to 1998 and I have no idea why Estes hasn't made them in the last 24 years because they are amazing. They're just a short rocket about 10 and a half inches long and they fly on mini motors. Perfect for small fields and they look very very cool. Now I think this rocket's going to be fantastic in the 4-inch uh, size. I have a 54mm motor mount which will give me a lot of options uh, for flying from fairly light motors up to some pretty heavy hitting uh, K motors. One of the design considerations when drawing up the 4-inch size Ninja is accommodating the very long fins as well as using a plastic nose cone that's going to have a uh, filled in shoulder that goes back 3 inches into the uh, payload tube. Now I had considered uh, cutting the bottom off of the shoulder of the nose cone and uh, running a, an eye bolt up high, but I decided, you know what, it'll work just fine uh, to keep the shoulder intact. That'll leave it nice and strong for using those uh, shear pins. Uh, now, this is my uh, payload tube right here, and uh, I'm going to leave it full length. This uh, comes at 15 inches, and so if I consider the nose cone length as well as about half of the avionics bay, that gives me about 8 inches or so uh, to stuff in my uh, parachute and shock cord, and that's going to be plenty. Now we do need to cut down the, the, the main body tube here, the booster tube, and we had to figure out how long that's going to be. Of course the total length of the booster tube plus the uh, payload tube is going to be 42 inches for this rocket. Now this is the size of a 54 1706 motor. The motor will stick up just a little bit and this will be set at the back end of the rocket. I wanted to move the centering ring as far forward as I could because I want the fin tabs to be as long as possible. Now they're not going to go all the way forward uh, they're going to be back here a little ways or so, and that's going to give enough room uh, when you consider the avionics tube going to about here. And uh, the uh, top centering right there, it gives me another 8 inches or so to fit the, uh, um, the shot cord and the drogue parachute. So it's going to be a tight fit overall, but in the end I'll be able to keep the nose cone intact. Uh, that'll make for a, a smaller area to pressurize, meaning less uh, uh, black powder to use for separation. These are all good things. Now I won't have... Um, the weight of all my electronics up high, but I will uh, plan on using some uh, lead weight up front in the nose cone. So I will be drilling a couple holes. We're not going to use these little eyelets anyway here. Uh, this will be for the shot cord attachment and a hole to drop in the lead weight and epoxy for balancing the rocket. Um, so these are some of the design considerations that you have to think about when you're uh, upscaling a rocket like this. Um, this is already an upscale here from the original Estes rocket, which didn't need any nose weight just due to the uh, uh, weight proportions of it. A tiny motor versus their plastic nose cone, fiber fins. This thing's going to get quarter inch plywood fins which are pretty heavy. Obviously the motor mounting area is pretty heavy and the motor itself is pretty heavy compared with a, a plastic nose cone, relatively lightweight uh, cardboard tubes. Uh, so just some things to think about if you want to upscale your own rocket. Uh, there are definitely design considerations that you have to work out. Another consideration for leaving the payload tube long and cutting the booster tube down is that I only have to do one body tube cut in this whole build and I really like that. Uh, this will help keep the factory cut edges a little bit sharper and uh, just uh, reduces the amount of work that I have to do. Uh, this is obviously kind of a, a shorter booster tube for a, a rocket, but everything will fit just fine and it'll be easier to, uh, to reach the uh, screw switches when the rocket's on the pad. Um, so to, uh, to mark where I'm going to cut the tube, I do what I normally do. I use uh, a piece of paper and I just wrap it around the tube. Uh, I don't recommend using masking tape because you can actually stretch masking tape and it can, it can kind of wave up and down as you're, as you're uh, moving it around the body tube. Paper, on the other hand, does not really stretch much, if any, at all. Um, so what I've done is I've marked at uh, 27 inches right here where I'm going to cut the body tube off. And I'm simply going to take my pencil and run it along the paper all the way around. This will give me a nice line. And then I'll remove the paper 
and just uh, run my uh, X-Acto knife over it. Nice and easy. Make multiple cuts until it finally goes all the way through. And uh, I had the, uh, the nose cone up on, on this side earlier. Uh, I didn't mean to show it quite that way because the, the side that I'm going to cut is actually going to be the bottom of the rocket. This will leave a nice factory cut uh, touching another factory cut uh, for the uh, uh, payload tube. And that will make a nice, nice good seal. At the bottom, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat and no one will ever know. Okay, there we go. I've got my cut line marked. I'm going to remove the paper, but I'm going to hold on to this paper because I'm going to make another uh, uh, perfect circumference mark later for the uh, fin location. Okay, perfect. Here's the bottom of the rocket. Looks just fine. I'll just clean it up with a little bit of sandpaper in a while. But for now, I'm just going to mark this as the bottom of the tube so I don't accidentally cut fin slots on the other side. As you can see on the Ninja here, the aft end of the fins actually sit pretty far forward of the aft end of the body tube. So doing some uh, measuring and, and markups here, the original Estes kit uh, had the fin one inch up from the bottom of the body tube. Now this is a 5.43 uh, times upscale uh, from the original BT20 body tube size. So if I were to use the SS measurements, it'd be 5.43 inches from the back of the tube. However, I've taken a little bit of liberty. I'm going to move the fins back just a hair, just to help out with the uh, center of gravity and center of uh, pressure issue. Uh, I did the same with this rocket here, and it looks just like the original. You can definitely see there's plenty of body tubes sticking out. So. It's, uh, it's not precise, but it's, uh, it's definitely one of those compromises that you have to make when working with a different size rocket and different materials. And anyone who knows the SS Ninja will absolutely recognize that this is how uh, the fins look. So I've met, marked uh, 4.75 inches from the bottom of the body tube here. And I'm going to use my paper again. And I make a nice perfectly straight line. And I'll draw the line all the way around on the body tube so the uh, 4.75 inches is exact. Uh, for all three fins. Then we'll get to actually uh, making up the fin template, measuring how long the tab's going to be, and we'll start uh, slotting the body tube for the uh, uh, fin slots. So I have the mark drawn for the uh, aft end of the fin tabs for cutting the slot. I use the uh, paper that I wrapped around the body tube and marked where the paper met itself. That gives me a, a total circumference of the body tube here. Dividing that by three, I've got my uh, marks for where each uh, fin slot's going to be. So I'm just going to wrap this back around We'll mark where the fin slots go. One of the great things about using Open Rocket or any rocket design software is that you can export the rocket files uh, to a PDF and actually print them out. Uh, so it's not just uh, looking at uh, your design on the, on the keyboard and imagining how it's going to look. You can actually get real templates and this works for transitions fins, all sorts of good stuff. Normally it works out uh, uh, great when you're working with smaller fins, however when you uh, are working with a bigger fin for a bigger rocket, uh, you do get a multi-page printout for the fin. So we'll just be uh, cutting off the margins here, lining up all the fin pieces together, I'll tape them together, and then I'll have my template for the fin. And the nice thing is too is that uh, when you print it to uh, actual size, you'll also get this um, scale right here that you just uh, want to verify with your uh, ruler to make sure that it is the proper size. In this case it is. Life is good. Let's get to uh, cutting out the fin template. And just real quick, if you have a chance to get one of these rulers, I absolutely love it. It has a piece of cork on the back which prevents the ruler from sliding around on your paper, uh, which is especially helpful when you are cutting stuff out. You can just run your razor blade right against the ruler here. Try not to let it jump up and cut your finger. Very easy to make a nice straight cut. Okay, now that I have my full-size fin template, I can just uh, set it on the body tube here, right where I'm going to cut out the uh, slot for the fin tabs. And I can just mark where the top end of the tab is. There we go. Now I'll use my paper. I'll draw a circle around the body tube up here. Then I can just draw my straight lines for where the actual slots go.
Okay, I've got the three lines drawn for each of my three fins. Of course, it's only half the story as we have to account for the thickness of the fin. So I'm just going to take a piece of plywood that I'll be using on my fins, and I'll mark that as the, uh, as the width that we need for the slots, so it's about as precise as it can be. And I'm just going to draw an arrow on each slot so I cut them in the, in the correct direction. Because, of course, as we, uh, as we make the, the slots wider here, the center of them will, will move over a little bit. If you cut one on the left and one on the right, now your fins aren't going to look so good. All right, here's a piece of uh, scrap quarter inch Baltic birch. So I'll just uh, set that, uh, line it up with one side on the line that I've already drawn, and I'll just mark where the other side of that wood is. Do it in the same side for all three lines that I've drawn. There we go. Now I can just use my uh, angle aluminum here and finish the lines. Okay, there we go. All we need to do now is just uh, double check the width on everything looks just right, and uh, we'll get the ruler out and just start going nice and easy with the X-Acto knife. I find that when I'm cutting the cardboard tube, just because of the flexibility of the tube once you start cutting it, it's easier to cut the slots lengthwise and then do the ends. That will give the uh, tube a little bit more support while you're doing the, uh, the long cuts. Alright, I have my uh, two lengthwise slots cut, so now all I have to do now is just uh, do the top end and the bottom end. We can pop this uh, slot out and uh, do this two more times. Now keep in mind in the corners up here and, and the sides when you're doing your fin slots that if it doesn't look perfect, that is not the end of the world. Remember, this body tube is going to be supported by uh, centering rings on the front and back of the fin tabs. We're going to have the fin tabs going into the motor mount, and then we're going to have epoxy fillets uh, covering up all the joints, too. So if it doesn't look perfect, that's okay. Build on. It's not the end of the world. Just doing a fit check here with the uh, plywood. Looks like it does fit, but it's slightly on the tight side, which is actually perfect. I'm much uh, happier just uh, widening out the slots a little bit with uh, some sandpaper versus trying to make up for material that is no longer there. So I have the eye bolt put in place with the uh, JB Weld drying on that. While we're waiting for that to cure, I cut a fin. All right, looks great. Two more to go. If you look carefully in the model rocketry safety code, it says as soon as you get all the parts for your rocket together, you have to do a mock-up. Well, here it is. It's looking pretty good. In preparing the motor mount for uh, installing into the booster tube, I decided that I'm going to use fin pockets for uh, uh, the fins on this rocket, I just don't want to reach in this far to do the internal fin fillets. So I'm going to add the uh, middle uh, centering ring here. And to get the spacing on that, I simply just took a fin and uh, figured out the spacing. Did that all the way around. Then I wrapped some tape around where the uh, end of the, uh, of the uh, centering ring goes. So what I can do to get some epoxy onto the joint is I'm going to slide the centering ring towards where the fins go and then I'll uh, put some epoxy on the body tube and then I can slide the centering ring into position. That'll get some glue on that joint there. Alright, that's probably more glue than I needed, but that's alright. So now I'm just going to slide the uh, centering ring back into, pos into position here, right up against that masking tape. And as you can see now there's a nice clean joint here between the uh, centering ring and where the fins go and that way it's not going to interfere with the uh, uh, installation of the fins uh, with any epoxy lumps sticking up. Now to help with uh, the setting process, uh, one last check to make sure that the fins uh, still fit just fine. They do. That's great. I'm just going to take some thin CA and add a few drops going around. There we go. And the CA dries so quickly that this centering ring is now in position. So I can take this uh, masking tape off, come back around with the epoxy and add a uh, fillet on the aft end of the centering ring. Now you can add a, a fillet on the, uh, on the fin side if you really want, but then you'll have to be uh, sanding away some of the fin tab to accommodate for that. Alright, there we go. With that masking tape all gone, now I can just come back with the uh, epoxy and add a, uh, a fillet on the aft end of the centering ring. Okay, so with the uh, 
fillet in place there. I'm just going to set the motor mount tube upright, allow the epoxy to cure, and I'm going to cut some uh, strips for the fin pockets. All right, here's the fin pockets in place. As you can see, I just measured and marked where each of the three fins are going to go, and then uh, cut some balsa wood strips. They don't have to be much. The lighter, the better, really. These are simply acting as a dam for the epoxy uh, for when you put the fins in. So I, I don't know if you can tell very well in the video, but I angled them in inwards just slightly. There's still plenty of room to fit a fin in place. I know this is kind of backwards here, uh, but you can fit the fin in no problem. And then due to the shape uh, of the uh, pockets being angled inwards here, that'll help the, the epoxy inside create more of a, uh, a fillet uh, shape rather than just a straight vertical um, extra epoxy sitting around. So just remember when you're doing this, uh, don't let the fin interfere with the uh, eye bolt. Other than that, yeah, super simple. You're just creating a dam for the epoxy and uh, this thing is about ready to be installed into the booster tube. Uh, I will say I'm not going to install the aft centering ring just yet because I want to come back in after installing and put a fillet on the aft end of this centering ring here. Just waiting on the wood filler to dry. favorite uh, parts of building a rocket. However, the effort's worth it. Uh, the fins look a lot better with less wood grain showing and uh, less effort involved in uh, doing the priming and sanding and all that to get rid of that wood grain. You also get rid of the body uh, tube spirals which makes the rocket look uh, quite a bit better in my opinion. So with that done, uh, everything's sanded and ready to go. I uh, just reinstalled all the fins to make sure everything fits well. Now uh, we're going to install the motor mount and just one of the fins because we're doing the fin pockets. Normally, uh, when I put the fins on, it's a very dramatic thing. You get to put all of them in place, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, in this case, because we're doing the fin pockets, I want the epoxy to cure on each fin uh, properly, creating a nice uh, fillet at the base, since I won't be able to get back to it once I put the fin in. So let's get started with that. In preparation for attaching the motor mount in the first fin, I've actually, uh, I have two batches of epoxy ready to go here. The first one is already mixed up. It's about 10 grams, and this is going to go on the forward centering ring as I push the uh, motor mount into place. The next batch is 30 grams worth, and I'll mix that up after I put the motor mount in. That's going to be for the fin itself. Now, 30 grams might sound like a lot for one fin, but remember you are attaching the fin and adding the internal fillets at the same time. So you're going to have a, a decent amount of epoxy going into those fin pockets inside. So I'm going to take the rocket apart here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the motor mount back, reach in from the front uh, with the stick here and just add a little bead around uh, for epoxy for the forward centering ring. Now I'm not going to epoxy the aft centering ring in uh, because I don't, I don't want any epoxy getting into where the fin pockets are at all. I want to keep those nice and clear for the fins and I'll come back later and add a fillet uh, to this uh, aft centering ring uh, later once I'm done with all the fins. There we go. Now I'm not going to twist the uh, motor mount around or anything to get more epoxy coverage on the centering ring. I simply want some epoxy to get that started. I can come back for a fill it later. Uh, but until then, it's time to mix up the epoxy for the fin and get the fin installed. Okay, I've got the uh, rock epoxy mixed up and I actually warmed it up a little bit to help it flow better. I'm going to start uh, just uh, flowing some epoxy into the fin slot here. Then I'll add some to the root of the fin as well and uh, we'll get the fin in place. Be sure to have paper towels handy as you work with this because uh, epoxy just gets all over the place here. This is all going into the uh, into the fin slot dam and it's going to get messy but it's really easy to, to wipe off while the epoxy is still, uh, still curing here. So I'm just going to work it on spreading the epoxy out, getting it evened out inside the fin slot. I'm going to use as much as I can. Uh, inside the fin slot here and then I'll put the rest on the root of the fin that isn't going inside the slot. Alright, with epoxy covering all the edges, uh, that'll be uh, glued on the fin. It's time to get the fin into position here. And again, this is probably going to be a slightly messy process, but it's easily cleaned up. Just slide that fin into place. Now 
make sure it has real good contact with both the body tube and the motor mount. Now I'm going to clean up some of the epoxy and I'm going to get the fin jig in place. Also use some tape to hold down the forward part of the fin here. Okay, with the fin in place and the epoxy wiped clean here, I'm going to get the fin jig in place. That'll hold the fin perpendicular to the body tube. Okay, now with the fin held perpendicular to the body tube properly, I'm just going to get some masking tape and help hold the fin nice and tight against the body tube. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to leave the fin here, uh, let it uh, just sit uh, perfectly vertical while the epoxy occurs. I know this is a little bit more of a tedious process than just putting on all the fins at the same time, but then again, I don't have to come back to do the internal fillets. All right, I'll leave this alone for a while, come back in a bit. All right, 6 a.m., just before I'm going to work here, and I'm uh, going to get another fin done here so it has uh, plenty of time for the epoxy to cure. Now, if you're working 9 to 5, that'll be about 8 hours or so for epoxy curing time. However, I'm going to be gone for an entire week, so fin should be just fine by the time I get back. And with any luck, I'll get home uh, with enough time to do the third fin before I go to bed, and then my first full working day that I'll have, the fins will be all done. Alright, that looks good. I'm off to work. See ya. Okay, back from work. I've got my third fin ready to go. We're going to get this uh, fin installed. We're going to pour some epoxy in. And we'll uh, get the jig back on, put the tape in place, and all fins will be done. With the third fin secure on the Ninja, it's time to get to work on the fin fillets here. I've mixed up 25 grams of epoxy. I'm hoping to use a bit less than that on the fillets because we already have a relatively uh, tail-heavy rocket. Uh, however, I didn't want to run out of epoxy uh, during the process. So we'll start with 25 grams, see how much I actually use, and hopefully uh, come down from there. Now this is the part of the build with the, uh, the booster where you lay your epoxy down, then you got to set the whole thing aside for 12 hours or so until the rocket epoxy cures properly. So we'll get that done, then we can move the, uh, the booster section off of the bench and uh, work on other projects for this rocket so we're not just sitting around doing nothing and keep this build going forward. Now it looks like I'm starting to run out of my 25 grams of epoxy, but once I start running my big popsicle stick down the fillets, uh, it'll capture a lot of that epoxy and uh, move it out. So even though it looks like you're running low when you're doing fillets, uh, you're probably going to be just Here's fine. Here's a big popsicle stick. Just start with one end, move all the way down. It's best to do it in one shot, but with a long fillet like this, you're going to have to probably start over a couple times. I can see a little void there, so I'll just get, get a little more epoxy into that void. And come back and do that again. We've got plenty of working time with the rocket epoxy, so you can just do this over and over until they look just right. There we go, that's looking real nice, and you can see quite a bit uh, of epoxy was left over from that fillet. So the nice thing about rocket epoxy is that it's relatively thick, so you have plenty of time to kind of shape the epoxy and get it the way that you want it to look and it'll smooth itself out generally pretty well, not as nicely as a thinner epoxy, but it'll hold its position. But remember, it's hard to sand it away, so if you're adding too much epoxy, then you're going to add a lot of work to yourself later when you're trying to sand it down and make the fillets look nice. It's always easier just to come back in with some wood filler and, uh, and sand that down versus trying to sand down this rock hard uh, rocket epoxy. Fillets are important for the fin strength and for the aerodynamics, uh, but you definitely get to a point where it's more about the looks than about the strength, such as just you know the tips of the, the fins up front here. So I can easily come back here with some filler later and uh, make that look a little bit nicer. You want to do the best job that you can with the epoxy, but remember that perfection is the enemy of good enough, and you don't want to create more work for yourself uh, down the road. Okay, I'm generally pretty happy with the shape of those fillets, so I'm going to pull the uh, tape off here, and that'll allow the edges of the uh, fillets to sit down on their own before the epoxy has a chance to and set And just up. with the way that rocket epoxy works when you're working with it, it kind of tends to go everywhere. 
So uh, once you take off the, the uh, protective tape here, you don't want to add any more because you'll just end up getting it everywhere that you don't want it to go. All right, we're going to let the epoxy set up and just do its thing. I'm going to move the uh, booster section off the table here. We'll get to work on some other stuff that we need to do. While we're waiting on the fin fillets to dry, we can be working on the avionics bay at the same time. Now, I was originally going to use one of these couplers to stiffen up the aft end of the booster tube. Uh, however, I don't really uh, like how thin the coupler is uh, for using it for an avionics bay. So I'm going to cut one of these up and actually use it to stiffen up the uh, coupler for the avionics bay. And I'll take some of my leftover uh, booster tube and use that for stiffening up the uh, back end of it. So we'll get to that later. Uh, but for now, we're going to fabricate up the uh, sled and uh, we'll stiffen up the tubes as well. So this time for my sled, I'm using a 3 16 of an inch uh, plywood here. It's a little bit lighter than quarter inch and it'll be just fine for holding the altimeters and the batteries. So I've got it three and a quarter inches wide, six and a half inches long, and as you can see, that'll allow for some adjustment up and down if I need to fine tune the position for the switches so I can reach in with my uh, screwdriver and turn the switches on through the holes there. So anyway, let's uh, get this thing to the bandsaw. We'll get the uh, avionic sled cut out and uh, we're also going to use quarter inch for the flanges that will go through the all thread here. Okay, cutting that out went by pretty quick. I got the holes uh, cut in the flanges here, and I even had some epoxy left over that hadn't set up yet, so just use that. We'll clamp these in place, and uh, we'll set this aside for the epoxy to cure. All right, so I made the cut in the uh, inside coupler here, and you can see it's not just one cut. You actually have to take a strip out because obviously you're reducing the circumference of it to fit inside the first tube. Uh, so to put them together, I've mixed up some uh, Bob Smith epoxy here. It's a little bit thinner than the rock epoxy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to coat the inside of the uh, outer tube here. And then I can simply kind of push the, uh, the inner tube together like this. It'll come right, right in, let it back out, and then that way it doesn't smear the epoxy everywhere. Uh, but just to be ready though, I do have some wax paper that I'll set the whole thing on so I don't uh, spill any epoxy out. All right, so I've smeared the epoxy inside the outer tube there. I'm going to grab the inner tube, just tighten it up a bit. We'll just stick that right in there. And we'll make sure it comes all the way out. So the whole thing's resting up against the outer tube. And uh, we'll just wipe any excess epoxy. I'll put a clamp on the top, clamp on the bottom, and uh, we'll let the epoxy cure. Well, I've been waiting on the fillets to cure on the booster section. I have been uh, busy at work with other projects for this rocket. Here's the uh, avionics bay tube. I added some thin CA to the outside. That'll help stiffen the tube a little bit, but more importantly, it's going to prevent any fuzzies uh, from the uh, cardboard coming up and locking the tube in place. And that can be kind of a problem with the cardboard rockets. Here's the avionics uh, sled right now. So far, I've got my two altimeters. I'm using missile works like I always do. I've got uh, some charge caps going in, some terminals, and uh, I've been finding all the other parts that I need for the project. I've got my uh, motor retainer right here. I've got some wiring charge caps, all that good stuff. I couldn't find any wing nuts though, so we're sort of at a standstill there. Maybe not quite uh, for the entire project, but I do have to go to work tomorrow, so that's going to put us on a bit of a break. The good news is, I do have all the fillets done on the booster section. They look real nice, and I'll be able to come back later with some sandpaper and some filler and make those perfect. So before I go to work, I'll uh, set the booster section upside down like so, and add in the uh, uh, um, Fill it on the uh, aft centering ring here on the back side, and then we can come back in later and add the uh, very aft centering ring and the motor retainer. So that'll be fun, and it's great to have a project back on the building board that I'm excited about. It's good to be building again. I know my output's been a little bit low over the last year or so, uh, but it's uh, great to be putting a, a project together again, and I uh, can't wait to see you next time.